Deep in the untamed wilderness of the southern Urals lies Arkaim, a site enveloped in mystery. This enigmatic site stands as a guardian of a forgotten epic, offering a mesmerizing glimpse into an ancient world that once thrived in secrecy. Often referred to as Russia's Stonehenge, its discovery in the late 20th century sent shockwaves through the historical and archaeological communities. Its discovery was so groundbreaking for human history that even the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, visited the site. His visit not only underscored the site's importance to Russian heritage, but also elevated it to a symbol of national pride and a testament to the unforeseen depths of human civilization. Dating back to the 17th century BC, Arkaim is not merely an archaeological treasure. It serves as a portal to a civilization that nearly slipped through the annals of time, echoing the brilliance of the minds that once roamed its lands. The discovery of Arkaim, amidst the vast and largely uncharted expanse of Russia, prompts a stirring question. How did such a complex and advanced civilization flourish in this remote corner of the world? The immensity of Russia, with its varied landscapes and harsh climates, has long posed a formidable challenge to explorers. Yet, against these odds, Arkaim stands as a beacon indicating the presence of an advanced society in the Urals at a time when most human settlements were still emerging. This remarkable find challenges our understanding of ancient human societies and their geographical spread. Arkaim's discovery proves that our planet harbors more secrets than we have uncovered. It leads us to ponder, could there be other hidden settlements like Arkaim? silently waiting to unveil the lost chapters of human history. The sophisticated architecture and cosmic alignments of this site further accentuate its significance. Archaim's alignment with celestial bodies indicates an extraordinary comprehension of astronomy and cosmology. Delving further into the study of Archaim, we will unlock a gateway to a richer understanding of our common human legacy, as well as the enigmatic riddles that consistently mesmerize our understanding of early civilizations. At first glance, Arkham's structure presents a fortified settlement, encircled by two concentric circular walls. The outer wall, approximately 520 feet in diameter, and the inner wall create a defensive buffer showcasing a strategic approach to urban design and security. Each of the walls speaks to the architectural skill and resourcefulness of the Archaim inhabitants. The utilization of materials that are challenging to manipulate or process, combined with advanced construction techniques, indicates a deep understanding of engineering and environmental adaptation. The layout and scale of Archaim also raise questions about the technology and tools available to its builders. The sheer size of the stone slabs, some weighing several tons, and the precision with which they were placed indicate a level of expertise that challenges conventional understanding of Neolithic societies. This has led to various theories, ranging from the use of primitive yet ingenious engineering techniques to more speculative ideas involving advanced lost technologies. Inside the walls, Arkaim reveals its true architectural splendor. The city was meticulously planned, featuring about 60 dwellings radiating like spokes from the central square. Each house, rectangular in shape, was ingeniously built with its own furnace, a feature that highlights the advanced domestic architecture of the time. These furnaces, essential for the harsh winters of Russia, also suggest a society that had developed a sophisticated understanding of thermal engineering. The layout of the streets and the orientation of the houses in Arkaim demonstrate a deliberate and well-thought-out urban plan. The radial design ensured that each house had access to the central square, which likely served as a communal area for gatherings and ceremonies. This centralization reflects a societal structure that valued community and collective interaction. 
The finding of a sophisticated water and sewage infrastructure, mines, metal artifacts, ceramics, ritualistic relics, household tools and furnaces further underscores the intricate nature of Arkaim. The drainage system of Arkaim, often overlooked in the shadow of its astronomical and architectural wonders, is an integral part of its legacy. This system, intricately designed and meticulously implemented, highlights the practical and environmental acumen of the ancient inhabitants of Arkaim. The settlement, with its complex network of drains, was well equipped to handle the challenges posed by its semi-arid climate and the seasonal fluctuations of the southern Ural steppes. Arkaim's drainage system was not a rudimentary construction. It was a well-planned and executed network that catered to both domestic and communal needs. The system was designed to channel rainwater and waste away from the dwellings, ensuring a sanitary living environment. This level of urban sanitation is remarkable, considering the period and the place in which Arkaim was built. The drainage network was comprised of grooves and channels, strategically placed within the settlement. These channels were often lined with stones, a method that not only facilitated the flow of water, but also prevented erosion and sediment buildup. This careful construction points to a comprehensive understanding of hydraulic principles, a knowledge that was essential for the survival and prosperity of the Archaim community. One of the most striking features of this drainage system is its integration with the overall urban layout. The radial design of Archaim meant that each house had direct access to the central square, and the drainage channels were seamlessly incorporated into this design. They ran along the streets, connecting each dwelling to a larger drainage network, which eventually led the water out of the settlement. This integration ensured that the system was both efficient and unobtrusive, a feat of engineering that balances functionality with aesthetic considerations. The effectiveness of Arkaim's drainage system can also be seen in its impact on the settlement's longevity. The ability to manage water resources and maintain a hygienic living space would have been crucial for the health and well-being of its inhabitants. By effectively managing water, the ancient Arkaim society could prevent the spread of waterborne diseases, a common issue in ancient settlements. The construction of such an advanced drainage system required not only technical knowledge but also a coordinated communal effort. This suggests that the society of Arkaim was not only technically proficient but also socially organized, with a clear understanding of the importance of communal infrastructure. Suppose you've watched our video on the Harappan Civilization, also known as the Indus Valley Civilization. In that case, you may find Arkaim's sophisticated drainage system quite similar to the one in Mohenjo-Daro. The Harappan civilization flourished around 2600 to 1900 BCE in the northwestern regions of the Indian subcontinent. It is renowned for its advanced urban planning, architecture, and social organization. The cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro are exemplary, with their well-laid streets, sophisticated drainage systems, and impressive public and residential structures. Just like the cities of the Indus Valley, Arkaim exhibits a well-planned street grid. The roads are laid out in a systematic pattern, suggesting a high level of planning and foresight, similar to the rectilinear street layout seen in Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. A hallmark of the Harappan civilization was its advanced drainage system, and this feature is also evident in Arkaim. The presence of drainage facilities indicates an understanding of sanitation and public health that is remarkably advanced for its time. The Harappan civilization was known for its use of baked bricks in construction, a feature that is also observed in Arkaim. The standardization in the size of bricks and construction techniques across both civilizations points to advanced engineering skills and knowledge that seems to be almost identical in nature. 
The similarities between the people of Arkaim and the ancient Indian civilizations don't end there. The Ganges River, reverently known as the Holy Ganga in India, is not just a river but a symbol of faith, purity, and life. It's a river that has held a profound place in Indian culture, history, and spirituality for millennia. In Hinduism, the Ganges is considered sacred, believed to be the physical manifestation of the goddess Ganga. According to Hindu mythology, Ganga descended from heaven to earth to cleanse the sins of humanity. The belief in the healing powers of the Ganges is deeply rooted in Hindu tradition. Millions of people bathe in the river every year, especially during auspicious occasions, in the hope of physical and spiritual healing. This belief is not just spiritual, but also has historical roots, as ancient texts and practices have long attributed medicinal properties to the waters of the Ganges. Curiously, the rivers near Arkaim, called Bolshaya Karaganka and Utyaganka rivers, are, just like the Ganges, named after the Holy Ganga. In fact, according to legend and local belief, these rivers also possess healing powers that resonate with the healing powers of the Ganges. How did this reverence for the Ganges reach so far? Was there some long-lost historical connection between these ancient civilizations? As more discoveries were made, the similarities between the ancient Indian civilizations and the lost civilization of Arkaim continued to expand. For example, Arkaim's city layout is strikingly similar to a mandala. Mandalas are geometric configurations of symbols that are used in spiritual and ritual contexts in Hinduism and Buddhism, representing the cosmos metaphysically and symbolically. Arkaim's circular design, with concentric rings and radial divisions, echoes this cosmic symbolism. This layout suggests a sophisticated understanding of not only urban planning, but also of cosmic principles, spirituality, and symbolism. In Indian culture, the mandala is more than just a symbol. It is a tool for spiritual guidance, a map for the spiritual journey, and a method to connect with the divine. Mandalas are used in meditation and rituals, believed to help in focusing, attention, and establishing a sacred space. The resemblance of Arkaim's layout to a mandala might imply that the city was more than a habitation, it was a place of spiritual significance. The center of the mandala is often considered the starting point of contemplation, a guide to spiritual enlightenment. Arkaim's design, with its central square and surrounding concentric circles, might have served a similar purpose, possibly reflecting the city's role as a spiritual or astronomical center. The resemblance of Arkham's city plan to the mandala-type architecture found in India is uncanny. Indian temples, especially those built in the medieval period, often exhibit similar circular or square layouts with concentric structures, symbolizing a gradual ascent from the material world to the spiritual realm. The most famous example is the Borobudur Temple, which, though Buddhist, reflects similar Hindu architectural principles. Such uncanny similarity between Arkaim and such structures raises more questions about the transmission of architectural knowledge and spiritual concepts between these regions. Another connection with the Hindu civilizations was the discovery of the swastika symbol in various places in Arkaim, which added even more layers of intrigue to this ancient site. These ancient symbols, which resemble a cross with arms bent at right angles, have been found engraved on various artifacts and architectural elements within the archaeological site. Their presence raises questions about the origins, meanings, and cultural significance of the swastika in this ancient civilization. In the context of Arkaim, the swastika symbols appear on pottery, clay tablets, and even etched into the architecture of the settlement. This suggests that they held significant cultural and possibly religious importance to the people who lived there. Some researchers speculate that the swastika may have symbolized the sun, 
as its rotational pattern mirrors the sun's movement across the sky. In ancient cultures, the sun often had strong religious and symbolic associations. Like the mandala, the swastika is also an ancient symbol that predates many modern religions and is also most commonly associated with Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, where it holds profound spiritual significance. Its presence in Arkaim, a site thousands of miles away from the Indian subcontinent, enhanced the theories of a connection between the two civilizations. In Hinduism, the swastika symbolizes good luck, well-being, prosperity, and the eternal nature of the Brahman, or universe. In Buddhism, it represents the auspicious footprints of the Buddha. How did a symbol so deeply rooted in the Indian spiritual context find its way to this remote part of Russia? All of these strange discoveries have also reignited debates about the original homeland of the Indo-Europeans. Some scholars suggest that the site, along with the broader land of towns region, supports the theory that the Indo-Europeans originated in Siberia. This theory challenges traditional views on the spread of Indo-European languages and cultures, leading to the question, could Archaim indeed be the cradle of Indo-European civilization? Perhaps the most fascinating feature of Archaim was its incredibly sophisticated cosmic alignment and astronomical significance, which suggests that the ancient inhabitants had an advanced understanding of celestial movements and their impact on terrestrial life. Archaim's design and structure have led many experts to believe that it was used as an astronomical observatory and a sophisticated ancient calendar. This hypothesis is supported by the alignment of the site's doors and buildings, which facilitated the observation of at least 18 astronomical events. Researchers have noted that certain observational points within Archaim align with the sunrise and sunset during solstices and equinoxes. This alignment indicates a deep understanding of the solar cycle and its importance in ancient times. Throughout history, Various ancient civilizations have constructed sites that carefully track the summer solstices. Sites like Stonehenge, Chichen Itza, Machu Picchu, Abu Simbel, and more showcase the remarkable engineering skills of their respective cultures, but also emphasize the significance of celestial events in their cultural practices. The precise alignment of structures with the summer solstice speaks to the enduring fascination of ancient civilizations with the cosmos and their ability to harness the movements of celestial bodies in great precision. Ancient civilizations often base their calendars on the solar and lunar cycles, and Archaim's design might have facilitated the observation of these cycles, aiding in the prediction of seasonal changes and major celestial events. In many ancient cultures, the heavenly bodies also held significant spiritual and symbolic meanings. The alignment of Archaim with such celestial phenomena could reflect the site's role as a sacred space where the heavens and earth were believed to connect. This cosmic connection is evident in many ancient civilizations, where astronomical knowledge was often intertwined with mythology, religion, and the cosmos's understanding. The ability to construct a settlement with precise astronomical alignments showcases the technological prowess and advanced engineering skills of the people who built Archaim. It reflects a sophisticated knowledge of geometry, astronomy, and construction techniques that were remarkable for a civilization of that era, especially if you consider the remote place they developed. How were these societies able to achieve such perfect alignments without modern technology? Another interesting fact about the site that raises more questions is its sudden abandonment. Like many other megalithic sites worldwide, its builders appear to have suddenly vanished without a trace. Regardless of the reason for their vanishment, what they left behind gave rise to various ideologies and spiritual beliefs. Different groups, ranging from Russian Rodnovers to Zoroastrians and Hindus, 
view Arkaim as a sacred site. For some, it represents the second homeland of the Indo-Europeans, who initially inhabited Arctic regions. Others identify Arkaim with mythical places like Asgard of Odin, or consider it the birthplace of Zoroaster. This diverse range of interpretations showcases the importance this site has on human history. Adding to Arkaim's mystery are the strange reports of magnetic anomalies, strange lights, and curious fog formations in the region which fueled speculations about Arkaim being an energy node or some sort of vortex generator. While these theories are largely speculative, they do spark the imagination. In conclusion, we can agree that in the vast and enigmatic tapestry of human history, few sites capture the imagination as powerfully as Arkaim. The discovery of this remarkable site opened a window to a past both profound and enigmatic, hinting at the existence of a lost civilization whose sophistication and understanding of the world challenge our modern perceptions of ancient societies.